Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser here with my associate Danielle Matis. And today, Danielle, we're going to talk about, you know, motion x-ray. So how do you diagnose instability when people come to you? Well, one of the ways is with a motion x-ray. So, you know, people ask a lot, like, how do I know if the joint is unstable, aside from how it feels? And one way to determine that is to x-ray them while they're moving. So we say, you know, to see is to know. You know, is there joint instability there? And if we know that, then we, how do we treat it? Yeah, then if you know what the problem is, then you can do something about it. It's sort of like people have these chronic symptoms, like they just know something's not right of their lower back or something's not right with their knee or something's totally. not right. And it's, what I found too is, like so much of the anxiety is not knowing. Yeah. Because you know, they were recommended physical therapists, they were recommended sure. a certain kind of injection and nothing worked and then some people even, the doctors start hinting like it's in their head. Yeah. You know, where we can actually show them what the problem is. So basically this is a motion x-ray. Yep. So it can take regular x-rays, but it also can do it in real time. So the beauty of it is you have all the clinical signs, but to actually prove it objectively, we have you move inside the x-ray. Now ultrasound can do that on some joints mm -hmm. too, but not all of them. It's hard sometimes to strain the joint and move it, you know, while you're holding the ultrasound probe. So making the patient kind of move it or me help them move it under x-ray can be really helpful too. So this actually is an example of a motion x-ray on two different patients, one who has an unstable L5-S1 and then one where it is completely stable. So you can see like here's L5, here's S1, we'll freeze it. Um, so you can see how it looks like a stair step essentially where this, the vertebrae are all completely stable. So here, if we kind of draw a line down the back of the vertebrae, you see this right here. Whereas on a stable back, they all line up together. So that is a way for us to determine if someone does have uh, instability on the motion x-ray. And then you treat that, how would you treat it? So if there is instability, then we would likely treat it with prolotherapy, maybe PRP. If it's completely stable, but the person still has pain, then we talk about other causes. Okay, so here's a motion x-ray of the thoracic spine. Mm -hmm. So we can actually watch this person move, and this is actually almost the opposite of instability. It's really not even moving at all. So another example of to see is to know. Do you have instability or do you not? And how do we best treat that problem? And again, you're looking at are the vertebrae aligned or not? And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, you know, to see is to know. So like if somebody has lack of motion, then they're gonna need to do physical therapy yeah. or exercise. Mobilization or exercises, mobilization. yeah. So the good thing is we get an image. So we're obviously in this image, the person's uh, mm -hmm. arms are forward. So we're trying to see this junction here because even the neck patients, you know, they'll say they have a lot of tension yeah. here. And obviously if somebody has clicking, popping, grinding there, you know, they do, they most likely have some instability there. But usually what we're finding is that people have like a degenerative fusion here. Like they literally have a lack of motion here. Yeah. So it's no wonder that they're getting unstable up here. A big area too that people have a lot of pain that kind of overlaps between your practice and mine is that cervical thoracic, that junction, because a lot of people that would see you for neck pain also have a lot of clicking, popping in their thoracic spine. So this x-ray, you know, we do a little bit of a different kind of view. We have to have people kind of put their arms out or one arm out like you can see to kind of clear up this area and then still have them do, you know, flexion and stack flexion and extension, excuse me, and you can see is there instability or the opposite where this segment becomes like hypomobile or kind of more fixed as, you know, the neck is more unstable. And what I like about this is we slow this way down. I mean, the patient is not moving this slow, but we can really slow it down and freeze it and actually get pictures like of different segments and, and look to see what's moving and what's not. So this is actually what we're looking for on these scans. You know, does the person have instability or do they not? Is ligament, you know, are ligament injuries what's causing their pain? So yeah, you should be able to draw a line through the back of all these vertebrae, which you can, you know, here, here, here. And then it's like, a, I say call it a stair step, you know, here. And then same thing here, drawing a line. And then there's a stair step there. So, and that might actually be close, kind of coming in on that thoracolumbar junction where there's actually instability there and does that correlate to the patient's symptoms? 
Yeah, so you can on physical exam, they got, like this particular patient would have pain like here, then they'd have pain like down here. Yeah. They probably would say that there's some kind of a clicking. They just know when they move. So it turns out it isn't the whole thing that's unstable, just a few areas that yep. are unstable. What I like about it too is, because you, you probably have some stories you've heard, because people will say like there's a specific motion they do, mm -hmm. you know, and then they get like the symptom. Some people it's even like they, you know, they put their shoulder blade back and then, so literally you can have the person yeah. do whatever it is and then to see what's loose. Because seeing what's loose then you can more target or I can target more like what, where the Absolutely. instability is. Kind of what I like about it too is we can tell whether somebody has a leg length discrepancy because you'll see there's something about like if we just looked at this particular one, we'd mm -hmm. say, you know, thoracic spine, not bad. Obviously the cervical spine straight so that yep. we've got to work on that curve. And a lot of people, they have this like hyperkyphosis thing. And then of course, scoliosis. So again, and then, you know, we can do all kinds of pelvic measurements. Mm -hmm. So we can look at the static structure, but it's great to look at the static structure and then what actually happens with motion, put that together, then come up with a comprehensive plan that typically involves some type of prolotherapy because inevitably there's some kind of instability there. And then if physical therapy or specific kind of exercises are needed or work on the cervical curve, then Absolutely. We, can, we can do that. So with this x-ray, we can take a static film, you know, a regular uh, film where they're not moving. And then once we feel like we have a good image there, then we can have the patient do certain maneuvers and look to see, is there joint gapping? Like, is there more space uh, in certain joints? And really, the cool thing is, let's say somebody has a really bad right ankle and a normal or fine left ankle, is we can compare the two, which is really interesting to see how they look and how, you know, one is more unstable than the other. So we can see the ankle joint, subtalar joint, and we can even see joints of the foot all in one motion view, which is really cool. Yeah, so somebody might have plantar fascia problems. So in other words, why would the plantar fascia be contracting all the time? Well, it might be trying to stabilize this yeah. joint, or it might be stabilizing that joint. And then we don't talk a lot about top of the foot pain, but again, top of the foot pain <laughs> normally is instability. Mm -hmm of one of these joints and then like you said the subtalar joint the ankle joint you know does the joint open up and obviously in this patient the joints are looking good and so as far as like as far as stability this person at least in this motion yeah. they have stability then of course we could have the person on the side of the ankle totally. like it might be that when they go up on their toes, they're fine, but if they go on their side, then all of a sudden the ankle joint opens up. So sometimes we have to do different kinds mm -hmm. of motions.